Dear flight students and followers, welcome to our series called The Toughest Five. Our mission is to help you succeed by showcasing how to solve the most challenging ATBL questions. In each episode, Fabian and I will go over the five most difficult and frequently commented on questions from each subject in the ATBLQ database. We understand how tough these exams can be and we want to support you in overcoming these challenges by breaking down each question using sketches, easy tools and highlighting nasty traps and incorrect answers to show you how well you can prepare for your theoretical ATPL exam and boost your confidence in doing so. We will use ATPL Q, which is best known among flight students as it is designed to be the perfect addition to studying the theory. With one of the largest up-to-date question databases, detailed explanations and a thriving comment section for each question, ATPL Q is the tool to prepare you for your upcoming theory exam. So do yourself a favor, reduce your anxiety, get access using the link below, then study with us, pass your exam and take the next step towards becoming a pilot. One, the following questions will be from the EASA ATBL database, subject instrumentation. So pay attention, we'll give you three seconds to pause the question on the screen to test your knowledge and your solving strategy before we start with the explanation. Fabian and I are here to create yeah buddy moments with you. You'll see in a minute, so sit back and enjoy the ride, grab a pen and paper, and let's get started. One, two. Okay, let's use the ruling out the incorrect answer method. If you look at the picture, you can see that the AOA vein is aerodynamically shaped, meaning the thick part is at the back and the pointy end is at the front. So pretty obvious, the pointy end is the one that is facing into the airflow. This can only mean that the airplane's nose in this picture has to be on the left. With that, we can rule out all the answers stating the nose is on the right. Does that make sense? Now that we have established where the nose of the plane is, let's briefly talk about the AOA vein. The AOA vein acts like a little wing which can rotate freely in its mount, so it's trailing through the incoming airflow. In addition to that, the vein remains parallel to the incoming airflow which will leave the vein rotating upwards. Okay, Fabian and I want to show you with this plane, we've drawn on a piece of paper and this circle, which will represent the AOA vein, to better understand the movement of the vein. So the point where we pin the circle to the piece of paper is the mount of the AOA vein. The drawing part of the circle or is the back end or the thicker end of the AOA vein. Now watch what happens if you increase the angle of attack by rotating the piece of paper. See, the AOA vein is going or drawing a line upwards. And which direction is it? Anti-clockwise. So we can rule out answer B. Boom. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Okay, for this question, let's begin by taking a look at the second part of the answers provided concerning the true airspeed. The relationship between the Mach number and the TAS is quite simple. The Mach number equals the TAS divided by the local speed of sound. In the climb through the standard atmosphere, the outside temperature constantly decreases up until reaching the tropopause. With decreasing temperature, the local speed of sound will also decrease. Climbing with a constant Mach number in flight level 260, which is still way below the tropopause, the task will now also have to decrease since the equation needs to be balanced. This rules out answers A and C, which incorrectly state that the task increases. But what about the rate of climb, Joe? Great question, Fabian. And for sure, the trickier part starts now. As just stated by Fabian, the TAS has to decrease. Now with a constant thrust setting for the climb, the aircraft will maintain a constant Mach number by adjusting the pitch and is therefore simply trading its excess kinetic energy for potential energy, meaning altitude. This is why the climb angle and rate of climb increase 
leaving only answer B as the correct one. Now, this should be a basic principle you already know from your performance lessons, but here the context is a bit more complex. I hope with this explanation though, this will be a lot clearer now. And by the way, we have a super easy memory hook, hence a donkey bridge. So if you draw an altitude versus speed graph, you can use your right hand to showcase the behavior of the indicated airspeed, true airspeed and Mach number. Keep in mind, this is only applicable when climbing or descending below the tropopause. Okay, picture this. So your middle finger will be the indicated airspeed. Your index finger is the true airspeed and your thumb will represent the Mach number. So when climbing with a constant indicated airspeed, your TAS will increase and your Mach number will increase even further. Now when you climb with a constant Mach number, your TAS will decrease and the rate of decrease of the indicated airspeed is even higher. We hope that this is something that you can use in your exams as this is a super quick and easy tool. As usual, thank us later. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs>
Yellow refers to the aircraft being at a maximum height of 500 feet AGL. Therefore, regardless of the upper limit of the yellow color band, the aircraft, which is commencing an IFR flight, is well below the IFR obstacle clearance minimum of 1000 feet AGL or 2000 feet respectively in mountainous areas, which must be maintained within a radius of 8 kilometers. Now to break it down a little with the by less than, generally speaking, if the EGWPS shows yellow, the obstacle within the vicinity of your flight path can be 500 feet below or raising up to 2000 feet above you. Now assuming that the obstacle is only 500 feet below you and the required obstacle clearance in mountains is 2000 feet, you are 1500 feet less than the required obstacle clearance. Okay, this is a terribly phrased question, but Fabian explained it nicely. I hope you guys agree. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> We hope our problem-solving methods were clear and our sketches and explanations were helpful. If you want us to tackle more of these challenging questions, use the link below to get your ATPLQ subscription and start practicing right away. Notify ATPLQ via email which question you'd like us to do a video on and they will forward your request to us. The team of ATPLQ is always there to help and answer your questions and the question you struggle the most with might be the next one we're going to be answering in a video. And on that bombshell, here is your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, and click the link below to start learning with ATPLQ today, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning and the best candidates come well prepared. Wishing you all the best, Fabian and Captain Joe. <laughs> One, two.